Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. A huge thank you, as always, for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home in the southwest of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our Night Time Podcast. Welcome to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could give us a little follow, you would be an absolute legend honestly proper ledge now as you are hopefully aware we're currently away on holiday we're in orlando in florida check out our social media and you will find a whole bunch of stuff on there because well we like to keep you up to date because we're exhibitionists and we're probably a little bit needy but if you fancy taking a look then please do also got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash sunday night mystery where you'll find our sister podcast, which is also called Sunday Night Mystery. Time now for our latest adventure. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance... In all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. Now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. In the sleepy little village of Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, the huge bulk of a fat man looms outside the door of Jonathan Small's antique shop. A smile of satisfaction crosses the man's face as he opens the door and enters. How do you do, sir? Good day, sir. Good day, Mr. Small. Uh, your shop is just as I remembered it, uh, exactly as it was some six years ago. Why? Do you care for a chocolate, Mr. Small? A chocolate? Why, why no, thank you, sir. Well, I... well, as you wish. I have returned here, Mr. Small, to claim some property of mine. Property of yours? Exactly. You were paid well to keep it for me, a pair of silver candlesticks. Silver candlesticks? But the only... Schneider. Yes, my dear sir, Schneider. Now known as William Grant. But, but it's not possible, you... You can't be. Yes, time and science have altered my appearance considerably, yes. Well, the candlesticks, please. But uh, it's been six years. Uh, I never dreamed after all that time. I, uh, I've just sold them. Sold them? Just this morning for $500. $500? Are you stupid idiot? They're worth millions. To whom did you sell them? Well, Quickly, man, to whom did you sell them? Uh, I, I have the sales slip right here on my desk. I, I'll, I'll give you the information. Now, Mr. Schneider or Grant, just stand where you are. Why are you pointing that gun at me, you fool? I didn't know who you were six years ago, but I do now. And I, I know who to call about you, too. I have his number right here in my address book. Yes, here. I, I, I'll call him. have and... that gun. No, no, I won't. You... Oh. Oh. Schweinhund. So... Let's see that sail slip. Uh, no name, no address. If you were still alive, I'd... The address book. Huh. So this is who he was going to call. The man... <laughs> Why not? It would be ironic justice to make the call for him. Yes. And have the man I intend to kill find the candlesticks for me. Hello? I wish to place a long-distance call. To New York, please. Person to person. The name of the man I'm calling is Mr. Ken Thurston. You see, Mr. Thurston, I am a collector of early American silver. Oh? Yes. And when I learned that Jonathan Small had a pair of silver candlesticks made by Paul Revere for George Washington, I went to Valley Forge to buy them. You call me from Small's antique shop, Mr. Grant? Exactly, sir. Mm -hmm. As I told you, I found him dying from a bullet wound. However, he managed to tell me two things. 
One, that a man named Schneider has returned and is after the candle sheets. Schneider? Why, well, Ken? Yes, yeah, Chief, yes. Go on, Grant. Yes. Well, secondly, that I should call you. And then he died. And there you have my story, sir. You could have told me that over the phone, Grant. Why come all the way to New York? Because I wish to help you find the Schneider, Mr. Thurston. I don't know who he is. I'm not interested. But I must have those candlesticks for my collection. It's an obsession with me, sir. I shall not rest until I have them. I see. Well, I'm not sure this is any concern of the Bureau's, Mr. Grant, but if we learn anything, we'll let you know. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Would either of you care for a chocolate? Hmm? No. Right. No. Thank you. Very well, gentlemen. I shall bid you good day. Uh, what do you think, Chief? Oh, nothing but a crackpot. Wealthy collector. Oh, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about Schneider. Well, you, uh, you think it's the same Schneider we were after? I did trace him to Valley, For Valley Forge, only he got out just ahead of me and skipped the country. I still remember the file description. Short, 130 pounds, blonde, blue eyes, very nearsighted. Oh, say, that's not bad. Well, that was over six years ago. A long time. Yeah, not too long to wait for a few million dollars. Well, what are you driving Look, at? Look, we suspected Schneider of being a Nazi agent, arranging hiding places here for loot stolen from occupied countries. So what? So this. A lot of that stuff's never been recovered. They'd make a pretty good reason for Schneider to sneak back here now. Oh, sure, sure, Ken. But what would uh, George Washington's candlesticks have to do with it? Suppose I'll let you know, Chief. From Valley Forge. But, but we have nothing for sale at the moment. The owner of the shop has just died. Yes, I have heard. You a member of the family? No, I am Eva Masters, Mr. Small's assistant. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing to close up the place now, so if you pardon me, Mr. Uh... My name is Ken Thurston. Oh. Just one question, Mr. Masters. I'm interested in the silver candlesticks. I understood Mr. Small had a pair that were made by Paul Revere. They were sold yesterday. I'm so sorry. Oh, too bad. Do you have any idea who bought them? No, Mr. Small made the sale himself. However, perhaps there's a record in the office. If you care to wait, I'll check and see. Sure, Miss Masters, I'll wait. Oh, what? What's that? Well, Pagon Zelschmidt. Get out from under that counter. What the blazes? Here, let me take that thing out of your mouth. Police fire help the, the girl, the girl. What happened, Pagon? The girl, she did it. Count me subconscious. Eva Mastos, wait a minute. Oh, she must have skipped out the back door. Let's have the story while I cut these ropes. That story. She came in here asking for candlesticks. Was it my fault we didn't have any? But she conked me and ties me up here behind the counter. Uh, uh, there you are. So, Eva Mastos wasn't Mr. Small's assistant. Mr. Thurston, the late demented Mr. Small had only one assistant. Me. You? Sure. I was here in the Valley Forge trying to get in on a sucker. I, I mean, on, on a tourist trade. You understand? What kind of gold bricks were you setting this time? Mr. Thurston, they were hatchets. The original hatchets G. Washington used to cut down the cherry tree. Yeah. I had two dozen on consignment from a hardware store in Philly. O -o -only, only they didn't sell so good, so... Oh, so I took this job with Mr. Small. So that's how you got my name and phone number. Pago, were you here when he sold those silver candlesticks yesterday? Oh, Sure. A Dr. Eckhart bought him. Eckhart? Yeah. He's a little skinny guy with glasses and, and an accent. <laughs> what a sucker. 500 Mizumas for things to hold candles when you can buy electric bulbs for practically nothing. You happen to know this Eckhart's address? Why, it's, uh... Hey, why are you so interested in this silver gimmick? Huh? Must be pretty valuable stuff, eh, Mr. Thurston? They're worth a lot more than 500 bucks to a customer I know. They are? A, a lot more? That's right. Hmm, imagine that. Well, uh... Well, well, so long, Mr. Thurston. Drop around again sometimes when, when you're in the market for a hat. Wait a minute, Pagan. Won't do you any good to buy those candlesticks back. You don't know the name of my customer. Uh, why shouldn't we be stuffy about this, Mr. Thurston? Uh, let's make a deal. Okay. What's Eckhart's address? Room 304 at the hotel. Who's the customer? The United States government. Mm -hmm. So long, Pagan. Yeah. 
Hello, Dr. Eckhart. Mind if I come in? Well, it's something important. I'm quite busy packing at the moment. Yes, the clerk told me you were checking out, but I think you've got time to discuss those silver candlesticks there on the dresser. Do you mind if I look at them? Uh, yes, you wish. That is far enough, Mr. Thurston. Well, little Eva. You had better luck looking for candlesticks here than you had in the antique shop? Much better. And as you notice, I have found a gun also. But you have found nothing but trouble. Is that not so, Doctor? Yeah, Eva, my Shanna. You are quite right. Uh. Eva, who is this man? A very dangerous one. The man called X. A, a man called... Yeah, Doctor. And I am one who believes in removing all danger. Coming to it last, my dear Thurston. Grant, what are you doing here? Waiting for you to regain consciousness, my dear sir. Would you care for a chocolate? I'd much rather have you put that gun down. But not just yet, Thurston. I have no wish to emulate the departed Dr. Eckhart. Doctor. Well, he does look dead. But where's the girl? Yes, Little... Dr. Eckhart has reached the end of his trail, just as you and I have. What's that supposed to mean? It's simple, Thurston. I have found my silver candlesticks, and you have come face to face with Schneider. Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston is in Valley Forge, searching for an ex-Nazi agent named Schneider and some millions of dollars of loot stolen from occupied countries and hidden here in the United States. Now in the hotel room, Ken faces a gun held by the fat man, Grant, who claims to be a wealthy collector of early American silver. Yes, Thurston, I have found my candlesticks and you have come face to face with Schneider. You're wrong on at least one of those counts, Grant. Take a closer look at those things on the dresser. Closer look? Oh, well, sir, I shall. Well? Pewter. These candlesticks are pewter, shabby imitations, not the ones I was after at all. Yeah, a little local color, courtesy of the hotel. When I first came in, I was fooled by them, too. So, what about that Schneider crack and the gun? My apologies, Thurston, I... I came in after hearing the shots and took it for granted that the dead man, who called himself Eckhart, was Schneider. Go on. The gun was to defend myself, of course. Oh, of course, of course. By the way, does this uh, pocket hypodermic set belong to you? I found it beside um, Eckhart's body. Why, yes, it's mine. Must have dropped out of my pocket while I was examining him. My thanks for returning it. It contains insulin ampules, Grant. You are diabetic? Unfortunately, I am, sir. I carry the insulin with me at all times. Well, Mr. Thurston, I'll leave you now. I came down here thinking I could help, but I can see I'm well over my depth. I'll stick to my collecting from now on. That's a good idea, Grant, and don't worry. When I get the candlesticks, you'll hear from me. Thank you, sir. And again, my apologies for trying to play detective. Good day, sir. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, Mr. Zellschmidt. Huh? You know me? All Valley Forge knows you, sir. Your ability at judging antiques is famous. It is? Uh, I mean, oh, sure, yeah. And, uh, and speaking of antiques, uh, would you possibly be interested in a hatchet? Good for chopping down cherry trees. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm more interested in uh, candlesticks. Those things again. Uh, say, what's on this kind of candlesticks anyhow? That everybody... Zell Schmidt, I am willing to pay a substantial commission to the man who informs me the moment Thurston gets a lead on them. You are? Well, I, I don't sell myself for peanuts, you understand? Here's I... my card, sir. And here, a small retainer. Oh, no, sir. You'll have to make it at least ten bucks. Hey, a C-note. A hundred bucks. Precisely. May I depend on your, um, cooperation, Zell Schmidt? 
Believe me, Mr. Grant, my dearest friend, not only will I cooperate, I'll even help you find them. So Eva Mastos lives on Walnut Street in Philadelphia, Chief. That's right, Ken. The file shows she was a nurse in the Nuremberg Hospital. She got here by marrying a GI. And what about Eckhart? Your call didn't give me much time, Ken. There's one Eckhart with the same initials and description in Austria. Famous plastic surgeon. That's all I have. That could be plenty. I still don't see what all this has to do with Schneider and those candlesticks. Chief, I'm still positive they're the key to the hidden Nazi loot. You just do what I said, and we'll wind this thing up tonight. Hey, your train for Philadelphia is ready to pull out. Now, thanks for the lift, Pagan. Meet me there later with the address I gave you. But be careful. I don't want that address getting into the wrong hands. You understand? Oh, sure, Mr. Thurston. You can always depend on a Zelsh. That's what I'm banking on. See you later, Pagan. So long, Mr. Thurston. Hmm. Now, I wonder what he meant by that. Oh, well, bird in the bush, I always say. Oh, Zell Schmidt. Hello, Mr. Grant. What are you doing down here? I thought you might have some information as to Thurston's destination, so I followed you. Well? Well, Mr. Grant, I could say no, but uh, it's George Washington's birthday, so how could I tell a lie? <laughs> I'd be happy to give you the information. Good man. For a slight consideration. <laughs> Just a minute, Eva. May I ask why you have followed me to my apartment, Mr. Thurston? Sure, I'd like to talk over a little theory with you. So? Yeah, it's about a man named Schneider who had a scheme to come back to this country to cash in on a few million dollars worth of loot he had stashed away here. It involved plastic surgery and fake papers. But it was worth the gamble. Go on, Mr. Thurston. He went to a Dr. Eckhart for the plastic job. Eckhart had a nurse assisting him by the name of Eva Mastos. Very interesting. Go on, please. Somehow Eckhart and Eva learned what Schneider was after. The silver candlesticks that held the key to the treasure. You're right, Mr. Thurston. And I have them right here in this bag. But you must believe me. I don't want them for myself. It is for the people of my country for food and clothing and, and medicine. I must keep them. That's up to the courts to decide. You made a bad mistake when you tried to take things into your own hands, Eva. But what else could that? Oh, I don't know. I'm so mixed up. It all looks so simple at first, but now. Yeah. Well? All right. Ken, all right. Let us go inside and examine them. Perhaps we will be able to find what is in them or on them that day. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's dark in here. Ken, I will turn on the light. Don't bother, well, Eva. I'll turn them on for you. You... Hello, Grant. That gun's becoming a permanent fixture. It was nice of you to deliver the candlesticks to me this way, Thurston. I presume you've already guessed their little secret. Could be microfilm hidden in their bases. Schneider left them in the antique shop six years ago because I was after him. They were too hot to carry along. That is quite correct, my dear sir. That film contains a list of hiding places of ten million dollars worth of easily saleable jewels, paintings, rare objects of art. Now, Eva, my dear... Please be kind enough to give me the candlesticks. Eva? Better do as he says. But Ken, this man, do you realize who he is? Sure. He's Schneider. You disappoint me, Thurston. I thought I had altered my entire appearance. The plastic surgery was good. Yes, Schneider, but the uh, chocolates gave you away. The chocolates? A diabetic wouldn't be always munching on candy unless there was a reason. You were trying to pile on weight. And you were using the insulin to help you. You're a clever man, Thurston. Unfortunately, however, not clever enough. The candlesticks, Eva. All right. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Now I shall bid you farewell, Thurston. And you, Eva. You see, the race is not always to the swift, but to the wisest. Ken, he's going to shoot. Quite right, my dear. Goodbye, my friends. Ken! Get him, Chief. All right, let's have that gun, Snyder. Yes, this way. Get him, Wilson! Oh. Thanks, Wilson. Oh, you all right, Ken? 
Yeah, thanks, Chief. You timed it nicely. Well, you figured it. We were around waiting when Schneider came in. But I... I do not understand, Ken. How did you know he was coming here? Hmm? Oh, that was easy. I just told Pagon not to give him this address. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thurston. I guess the chief and me cleaned up this mess for you, all right? Ken, you know I killed Dr. Eckhart. Yeah, I know. Will I have to? Sorry. Sorry, Eva. Maybe it was justified, maybe not. That's something else the courts will have to decide. Yes, yes. Well, Ken, I guess that winds it. Yep. You know, Chief, none of this would have happened if Schneider had followed the advice of the man those candlesticks were made for. George Washington knew that silver and gold weren't the only coin. And he wrote it in his copybook when he was a boy. He said, Labor to keep alive in your breast that little spark of celestial fire, conscience. That's something for all of us to remember. All of us. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. May I remind you again that America needs scrap metal in order to produce steel. Steel to make things you want and have been waiting for. Steel to keep prosperity and employment at a high level. So this week, collect scrap metal around your home and turn it into your community scrap drive or to your local scrap dealer. Next week, with the dubious help of Pagan Zellschmidt, Mr. Axe tackles an international counterfeiter to whom murder is only a sideline. Pagan, of course, will be played as usual by Leon Belasco. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Richard Air's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So, till next week, same time, same station... This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS. The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest adventure on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. We'll be back in the UK shortly, but for now, we're just going to keep playing out our favourite shows. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you in spirit seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>